This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Pallet, a cut-rate American Kohei Kadono. At this moment in non-time, we are reading a short story called Painting with Scars. That is a very vivid, interesting name for a story, and I'm interested in reading it because of that. Let's see how this pans out for us. The following is an interview conducted by the Union Parish Police Department with Jake Welling concerning the events that occurred on the night of J- mm. Hey, don't fall over, Pop Filter. Pop Filter, I need you to be reliable. Okay. Concerning the events that occurred on the night of July 13th, 1990. Do you remember uh, July 13th, 1990? That's a very important memory. See, you can only remember that if you're a 90s kid. Uh, so, I don't know how it happened. I don't know why it happened. I'm not even sure entirely what happened, but I was there when it happened. We were just hanging out at a friend's place. There were a few people there, maybe ten or so, but not too many. We were all laughing and having a good time. Some of us were drunk or stoned, but I stayed sober. I had to. I'm not sure if that made what happened better or worse. So thus far, we don't have enough details to figure out what's going on in the story, but let's press on before we, like, really critique anything. Then this girl, Sandra, mentioned that she had some of her sister's stuff, who was a practicing witch, with, uh, was. Sandra had some witchcraft materials in her car, she had taken from her sister's room. With everyone there but me either drunk or stoned, some both, the general consensus was that messing around with this stuff was a good idea. This wasn't helped by the fact that it was Friday the 13th either. I was the only objector. I had done some research into voodoo, witchcraft, Satanism, you know, that sort of thing. Before, because I always thought of the paranormal, supernatural, whatever you want to call it, interesting. I never thought, I just never thought, ellipses, I knew it could go terribly wrong. Okay, so all of this has been kind of phrased very clunkily, and this is from an interview conducted with Jake Wells, um, but there's not a whole lot of interviewing going on, it's just a lot of telling And if we really want to get the full effect of this story, I feel that this story should be narrated, should be an audio file uh, that is couched in all of all of its um, 90s artifacting. Uh, But as it is right now, it's just someone telling a story via text. And I feel that that doesn't have a whole lot of impact. It's also um, a little too idealistic with... Uh, there being uh, pauses between, I don't know how it happened, I don't know why it happened, I'm not even sure entirely what happened, but I was there when it happened. Everything is a little bit too systematic, and I feel that a lot could be done to couch the story immediately in more realism. And since it's supposed to be a police interview, realism is what they're shooting for. I don't think that they're trying to be idealistic. But let's press on, because I'm already picking holes in the story where we haven't even gotten to any of the story. (laughs) Sandra went and got the stuff from out of her car, from out, uh, got the stuff out of her car. There was no from there. I'm just reading things that aren't there. But I know a whole lot of other critics that do the same thing, but in worse ways. Anyway, There was the usual stuff you'd expect to see, like incense, a Ouija board, stuff everyone knew what it was. But when she pulled out this book, I could tell it was old. It was written in some old language too, though not Latin. It might have been some ancient Celtic language or something. I just knew it was old, and it wasn't Latin. That book just made me feel so uncomfortable. No one else seemed to notice how creepy the thing was. They were just giggling away about demons and how they weren't real and all. 
So to be fair to the story, if the story was uh, an audio file of some sort, it would probably uh, sound less clunky than the way that I'm reading it, uh, because it's it's sometimes it's written systematically, and other times it's written like a person who is trying to formulate thoughts as they're going along, that are trying to find uh, ways to articulate what it is that they're saying, and. If those nuances were there in an audio file from someone who had been coached into acting this believably, then maybe it wouldn't come off as bad. Um, a lot of the times when you have, uh, these creepypastas, they're, they're better performed than they are written. And, uh, that only if you're, you're really dedicated to making them sound good. Um, so this story just doesn't know what it wants to be yet, I don't think. But let's press on. Again, we, we haven't given the story enough credit because we haven't gotten to the crux of the story. Maybe there's something interesting that happens that changes our opinion. So, Sandra proceeded to set up her sister's stuff. I was sitting on the other side of the room, watching as she lit up the incense and starting messi- uh, started messing around with a Ouija board. Some, um, some of them jumped when it started moving. The board told them to get the book. The board told them to open it to a specific page. The board told them to do the ritual on the page. It was a possession ritual. So the phrasing isn't uh, perfectly clear here, but are we saying that Sandra was doing the Ouija board by herself, or did other people join in? Because if it was just her and they were like freaking out that the the thing on the Ouija board was moving, (laughs) anyway... They were convinced that one of them was moving it around and messing with them, that there wasn't anything weird going on. The idiots took ellipses. One of the guys pulled out his pocket knife, but he, but he wasn't about to do the one, but he wasn't about to be the one to do it. Sandra said she would do it. She had gotten all this stuff after all. Drunk idiots. So I'm going to assume that the ritual involved a pocket knife uh, and and cutting people, but they didn't specifically mention that. Again, the story is, is clumsy and doesn't know what it wants to be, but continuing on. She started saying the words, chanting that dead language. She couldn't have been able to say it that well. When the time came, she cut her hand with the knife. That's where it went wrong. The blood coming from her palm cut. Every piece of skin it touched. She panicked. Bad. I think the same thing was happening to her on in her veins. This has really weird use of ellipses. Again, it's like it's supposed to be performed, but it's not. So she flailed her arm and her blood splattered everywhere. It got them too. The alcohol must have thinned their blood so they could. They all bled to death. Their bodies were covered in scars, and the scars made some sort of... They made a picture. They? I. Wellington went into shock at this point. It was decided not to question him again. And that's the end of the story. Do they mean, like, medical shock? Because that's bizarre. Um, yeah, like, obviously you wouldn't question him after that. Um, but... Presuming that all of this is true and that they're interviewing this guy, Jake Wells, which again, uh, good that we're getting the name of the person. Um, if they interviewed him and, uh, you know, he's, he's describing what happened, presumably they saw the scene, the police saw the scene and they knew themselves what was happening. Um, the idea that whatever the blood patterns made, whatever the painting ended up being, is some eldritch horror we're not allowed to know about and sends people into shock that is wonderful um but man the the story is just too ridiculous doesn't know what it wants to be the the mechanic of uh blood cutting things is weird um but again just doesn't fit in doesn't mesh well with the rest of its pieces of the story um i got nothing else to say about this i feel like I understand everything there is to know about the story and that there's nothing more to it. Commenter Egodram says, The story starts with an interview and then drops off at the end. What was the result of the investigation? What's the relevance? Very true, Egodram. But let's see who our uh, sponsor is that 
Prasikor set us up with. Today's episode was brought to you by Kale. Kale, the easiest way to extend your meaningless, pathetic life.